So now it is time for one of our carbon neutral fireside chats. COP28 is coming up in less than a year right here in the UAE. Uh, India will play a vital role in finding the formula to unlock economic growth as well as deliver the benefits of climate resilience, decarbonization and environmental sustainability. So what will that look like? Very pleased, uh, as Manoj mentioned, we have an official steeped in that question from the government of India, the Minister of Labor and Environment, Employment and Environment, Forest and Climate Change, His Excellency Bupender Yadav. Minister, thank you so much for joining us. How are you today? I'm fine and thank you very much for inviting me in this program and I uh, first of all congratulate to India Global Forum to organize a, a wonderful event on the relevant topic, climate finance and technology. I thanks to my friend Mr. Manoj also to inviting me in this program. Thank you. So before we travel the road to COP28, let's have a look at COP27 first of all. There was some disappointment that there wasn't more progress towards mitigating emissions. I'd love you to give us your summary on what you believe was accomplished and what was important to you. Uh, COP27 actually was a COP for implementation. Since along there was a demand by the developing countries to fulfill demand of loss and damages. I am happy that this long awaiting demand was fulfilled in COP27 and we unanimously agreed to implement the loss and damages action. Second thing, the four, the four important decisions. First, regarding the uh, next uh, quantifiable goal. Second, about Article 6. Third, about the mitigation measures and fourth about the adaptation policy. I think there was a sufficient progress on this thing. First time the agriculture uh, sectors will also be considered in the just transition. But India clearly stated that yes, we worked in the agriculture field, but agriculture is not a part of indices of India. And uh, as per our country is concerned, we always say that we are, India is already always a part of uh, solution, not problem. That's the reason what we announced in Glasgow as our enhanced NDCs we submitted before the COP27. India amongst the uh, few countries, less than 40, who submitted their enhanced NDC. Second, uh, merely 60 countries submitted the low carbon emission uh, planning and program. India announced its uh, 2017 net zero and we submitted our long term policy on the low carbon emission. So I said the uh, next thing, and finally I want to say our Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji initiated the mission life, that means environment friendly lifestyle. And in this uh, Sharm El Sheikh declaration, uh, all countries accepted and una unanimously it's come in the decision paper that environmentally friendly lifestyle means sustainable consumption and sustainable production is the need of this today's world that's very near to the uh, philosophy of India and the mission of our Prime Minister, Environment Friendly Lifestyle. I'd love you, Minister, to take us to what it's like when you're in the heart of these negotiations. What was the hardest part? And can you share with us any disappointments that you may have felt during the week? I think uh, negotiation was on right track and it's not a hard or it is not a, it is, it is in the interest of the world. I am disappointed that after so much promised, the 100 billion pledge is not to be fulfilled by the developed countries and still the technology transfer demand is, is not fulfilled. And you know the, what the countries told out from the poll, that time we say you must be strict on the CBDR principle, common but differential responsibility. But what we are hearing, some coal mines also going to be open in the western countries. But we, are, we still feel that all climate uh, change negotiation is strict on the principle of Paris, the CBDR, common but differentiated responsibility. Every country fix their NDCs according to their national circumstances and our stand in Glasgow now accepted by the world today. So what needs to happen now on the road to COP28? How can India set the course 
do you think, for finding solutions that work in practice? First of all, I'm very much happy that next COP will be organized in UAE and India and UAE world will work together in future also. And India is also uh, getting the presidency of G20. Our prime minister already uh, gave a motto of G20. The meaning is Vasudev Kutumkam, one world and one family. So that's a core understanding of India to feel the world as a family. And the second thing is very important thing in the G20 and environmental field also, India is already working in the field of circular economy, the sustainability of the sustainable, uh, sustainability of the economy, lifestyle and all this thing, the blue economy and other thing also. In the last call, uh, in the Sharm El Sheikh, the UAE and uh, Indonesia started an alliance for the for the mangrove alliance that's a very important that's a very economic uh, so, uh, 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 environmentally solution of the thing and india has also become the part of that alliance and i feel in ne next cop cop 28 by uae the implementation is then taken by in sharmal sheikh will be i think become more strong and more progressive in that manner that all developing countries will get justice in the field of climate change your government has made a, a really large commitment to increasing manufacturing, providing better paying jobs for more Indians. And that seems like a real microcosm of the world's challenges right now, to continue to improve people's lives while reducing our impact on the planet. So how will you grow manufacturing while reducing carbon emissions? India has already announced its NNs and DCs. As for NNs and DCs, India has already submitted that we uh, enhance the 50% production of our renewable energy. We are also using the technology who reduce the carbon emission to 40%. India is the, among the uh, few countries who achieved their NDCs target, those declared in the Paris. So our track record, our commitment, our credibility and especially the leadership of our Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi is so firm about uh, uh, to achieving the targets what India announced. We have already say, uh, said that India always be the part of solution, not problem. And I want to mention here one thing about the credibility of India is concerned that under the leadership of Prime Minister, India started the Collins uh, uh, Alliance for International Solar Alliance and now that's successfully working. Second is the CDRI, Coalition for Disaster Res Resilience Infrastructure. That is also successful working. Third is the LED IT under, with the collaboration of uh, Sweden. That's also working. So our climate action program also shows that India is committing towards uh, to achieving its target and it shows India's pathway. And that's the reason in the last COP, in the Sharmal Sheikh also, India among the few countries, I have already repeated now, who submitted their low carbon uh, emission strategy program. And that uh, program itself shows that India is ready to achieve its target with, it, with its low carbon strategy that India has already published it and put before the world in the last COP. We heard um, a little earlier from Dr. Jay Shankar, together with his UAE counterpart, about the number of partnerships between the UAE and India. I'd love you to say more about the partnership that you see coming between the India and the UAE at COP28. Yes, uh, it's uh, fortunate that we are having a G20 presidency and they are having a presidency of COP28. Definitely, we have already entered into the uh, some MOU in the last uh, year, uh, in this year, when the UAE uh, Environment Minister came to India, and that was a commitment between India and UAE to work uh, together uh, at the for in a different field and India. It's already working in the renewable energy sector, mission hydrogen, and all, all other, field, and definitely both countries will together in future in that. So India falls within some of the most climate vulnerable uh, regions in the world and it's been working towards sustainable energy transition with partners like the UAE and elsewhere. What do you think the greatest challenge has been in the journey so far? 
Greatest challenge is the climate finance and technology transfer. That's the plan. That, that's the uh, promises made by the developed countries. Unfortunately, it is not fulfilled. One thing also want to be mentioned here that I participated in one of the meeting in the last COP in Sharma Sheikh also with the, the meeting was presided by the UN General Secretary and that mentioned in the decision also that early warning system. Suppose in the world every person have a right to, uh, to get uh, the access for early warning system to a person, to a community and to a country also. And you know India, India's uh, Ministry of Sun, uh, Earth and Science are already working in that and we are providing this uh, early warning system uh, to 13 countries in the Bay of Bengal also. Suppose every country, community and country is able to get this early warning system, then we will reduce the unfortunate ex accident and human death due to the, uh, due to the climate uh, 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 the, due to the climate and due to the other cyclone and other things. So we think that these type of steps uh, taken by the UN, India fully support them and we also feel that uh, one of the thing, major thing that is a behavior, behavioral change and contribution by any individual for the climate change uh, uh, that's a mission life, environment friendly lifestyle the mission life meaning is let us individually on the basis of community or collectively we will work where we we focused on mind, mindful consumption that, rather than mindless utilization. Mm. And I think that behavioral aspect is important to fight for the climate change. Mm. Your Excellency, you've embarked on a project you call India's Life Initiative. It's a very ambitious name. Tell me about it and what do you hope to accomplish with it? I have already uh, spoken about the mission life uh, just uh, in the last question also. Again, I want to repeat that mission life is a movement where we need a public support, where we need a contribution by any every individual, where we think that so many best practices done in our civil, with, uh, our, we are doing with our civilizational, civil, civilizational values as, uh, with our culture, not in India, but in the African country, Latin American country and the other countries also, where the human uh, race lived with their uh, native wisdom, with their ethos, with their ethics, where we live with the nature. So how we will live with the nature uh, to using the uh, resources of the nature in, in sustainable matter. So sustainable consumption and sustainable production is the need of our, and uh, that uh, uh, is the part of the last decision of the uh, Sharmal Sheikh COP also. We feel that's the main mission which is, uh, which is uh, initiated by, by our Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji is the major thing uh, for fight with the climate change. So we feel that uh, uh, in everywhere in the world this mission life and the personal contribution for the mission life is needed by the every uh, people of this world. It's fascinating, the life initiative. And as I've been exploring it, it's one of the key parts of it is that the traditional, traditional Indian knowledge, as you say, norms, social behaviors are in fact traditional less- knowledge, Traditional knowledge of worldwide. We invite every noble idea from the world. Yes, India is also having a traditional knowledge. But where there is the best idea is there, we are ready to ac accept that that's, that's the reason our Prime Minister in the last week, June, gave a worldwide call also of mm. this traditional knowledge system. So tell me, give us some examples of how the, um, about how some of the traditional Indian knowledge or elsewhere in the world is less carbon intensive. Give us an example and, and how could it the encourage best, the rest of the world to the live best, this way? The best practices you've come as a, cal uh, 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 you know, that Indian population is the 17% in the world, but its carbon emission is 4%. Mm. The developed country's population is 17%, but their carbon emission is 60%. So, you know, the personal consumption, uh, this data itself shows, if in one part where the 17% population, only their carbon emission is 4%. The second part, the 17% population, carbon emission is 60%. Mm. How, why? because it's a lifestyle. Lifestyle means how we wisefully use our water resources, 
how we wisely use our um, uh, natural resources how we wisely use our uh, bio uh, our biological resources that's the reason how we we reuse recycle reproduce the thing that's the reason in the modern world we are living with the nature we are using the uh, uh, we are using the technique which is nature based technique with that we are more focusing on the circular economy where we reuse and recycle the produce also so that's the mindful consumption and we want to be stop the mindless utilization of resources mm. that's the major uh, challenge before the world and that's the object of mission mm. it's interesting you know the carbon footprint of you say of the average person living in india is far smaller than uh, the average carbon footprint of somewhere from where i'm from the united states or where i live the uk so i wonder if you think that the the developed world or the western world however you want to say it call it should be shrinking its footprint while india grows its footprint yes everybody must think about their carbon footprint and uh, for the developed countries apart from carbon footprint again i want to repeat it they fulfill their promises and let us they provide the same level playing field to the developing countries providing them the climate finance and technology transfer let's look ahead towards cop 28 what do you hope to achieve there i am very much affirmative and uh, cop 20 thing uh, cop 27 i have already said that that was a successful cop as for the implementation is concerned and i feel this this implementation uh, position which we decided in cop 27 i either about the loss and damages that was finally approved by the cop 27 and the other issue Issue, the new quantifiable goal mitigation measures adaptation practices and article 6 i think that will be completed in cop 28 that's uh, my affirmative thing what do we need to be looking at between now and then between now and um and when we can reconvene here in the uae for cop 28 what are the milestones that we should be looking out for uh let us we work together to fight against the climate issues let us we provide the justice to the developing countries let us the, the resource of the world will be get to the every community especially for the climate uh, warming the uh, uh, warming mechanism and all this thing and uh, what progress has to be done in cop 27 it will be go further in cop 28 You've spoken about the the role of of youth bringing together both conscious consumerism together with the the role of youth. I wonder if you would say more of more about that given the the power of youth within India itself. Ultimately future of the youth and uh, you know we we feel more res- we are give we want to give more responsibility to our youth they they have some idea they have some idea about the technology innovation they have some idea about the new with, the, with their new enthusiasm they have some idea about the equity they have the idea about the biological resources so i think Uh, they must become a conscious about thing we all are having a moral sense civil sense law sense let us we develop the environmental sense in our youth that is the important and that we need it from all youth interesting you know our, our my next conversation on stage will be with the head of um, ola financial and i know that india has a strong drive to not only uh, produce and move towards electric mobility within india but also to be exporting uh, to the rest of the world i wonder if you could tell me a little bit more about that ambition uh we have already fixed our ambition and we are working on that and i think the way in under the leadership of our prime minister shri narendra modi ji we, uh, we are working definitely we will become a part of solution fight again for in the for the fight against the climate change. thank you so much minister for joining us and here at the india global forum we will give you a huge round of applause thanks for being with us thank you